Everfree Guardian, Chapter 2, Part 2 When the sun was almost directly above him, Nate could feel the ground tremor. Looking down at one of the few apple baskets left in the orchard, he saw how they began to vibrate, and then violently shake as the tremors worsened. What the hell? He looked up through the trees as he could feel the center of the tremors coming from the plains beyond Sweet Apple Acres. Pushing through the foliage and stepping out, he skidded to a halt when he saw a bunch of rather large women almost trampling over one another as they made a beeline towards Ponyville. Nate sighed as he recognized the scenario. It was his fourth day of work all over again. Damn, cows are riled up again. As the giant females were closing in on the town, a pegasus in the air called out the stampede, urging everyone to get inside while their herd was still far enough away. So what was spooking them this time? It's not like there were many dangers out this way. Usually the loud noises and dangerous predators hail from the Everfree Forest. Of course, what he should have known was that those very dangerous can pull out of the forest and bleed into the kingdom as well. He knew this, and was reminded of it when he saw one of the cows in the back go down and began to get dogpiled onto by a bunch of quadrupedal... creatures. Looking out towards the orchard, Nate could see Applejack and her dog racing for the cows. Her aim was to stop the cows from bulldozing the town, and with her occupied there, her lack of attention to the creatures could cost her her life. Nate, pressing his lips together, jogged out into the plane and pulled out his pistol. Aiming it forward, he fired as several targets moved in the tall grass. With every shot hitting its mark, he could hear the familiar cries of the most iconic and common predators the Everfree has to offer. <sighs> Timberwolves. Nate immediately reloaded and slipped the pistol back into its holster. These wooden creatures were the weakest of all monstrosities in that damn jungle of nightmares. They may be ferocious, but they're not smart, and the wood that makes them up is not very strong either. They're just mean, and have a thing with coordination and ganging up on their prey or challengers. With Nate being the latter, the predators no longer focused on the cowed caucus. Instead, the pack of five were now solely locked onto his figure. With better game, there was a better prize. All hunters knew this, and now both sides were going to be fighting for the prize of survival. Applejack, in the meantime, shoved herself up against the herd of rampaging yet frightened herbivores, attempting to turn them away from the town entrance. Looking to her dog, she nodded to the other end of the herd. Other side, Winona, hurry! The dog slowed herself, turning and rounding the back of the herd. Squeezing them together in a thin line, both Applejack and her dog were able to slow them enough for the former to bring out a lasso and ring the leading cow. Pulling back and forcing her path to shift to the right, the rest of the cows followed the frantic leader as Applejack used all of her might to get her to slow to a halt. When she finally was able to stop the herd, it seemed being stationary calmed them, as they were breathing much slower than when they were running. Taking the lasso off of the lead cow, Applejack brushed the sweat off of her brow, and she walked over to her. Whew. Now, what was that all about? At first, the cow only moved back at her, but at the sight of Applejack's risen eyebrow, she cleared her throat. Ahem. Oh, begging your pardon, Applejack, but we were all jumped when we were heard near the castle gorge. Jumped? By what? The cow opened her mouth to speak, but both were cut off by a yell in the distance. Turning towards the sound, the cow began to grow frightened and panicky when they spotted the Timberwolves attacking something else that got in the way of the herd's rampage. Applejack herself was stuck in place when she realized the said something was her employee. Stepping up onto a rock to see better, she held her Stetson hat firmly against her head as she watched the two forces go at each other. Nate being caught in the middle of the pack ripped his arm away from the jaws of the Timberwolf that leapt onto him. Taking it by the body, he turned and threw it into another, smashing them both to pieces on the impact as he turned to the third one. Clutching its jaws together while lifting it up into the air, he barreled it down into the ground, full force, shattering its snout as he kicked his left foot backwards. His hardened boot clobbered a fourth Timberwolf trying to sneak up on him while his free hand grappled a fifth and final, presumably the alpha of the group. Holding the latter in a chokehold, he grabbed the third member of the pack and slammed it down on top of the other. With the one beneath it snapped in two, he rose his foot up again and smashed the head of the second to last threat to splinters. Glaring at the Timberwolf struggling against him, he kept it in his chokehold as he held down his torso with his knee. Twisting and pulling, he yanked off the head of the beast and tossed it away, dropping the bodies that thumped against the dirt. Staggering back from the broken animals, Nate let out a few hoarse breaths as he situated his hood, ensuring that his face was still concealed. Looking around at the wooden carnage around him, he turned to his arm, seeing a nasty bite wound on the forearm near his hand. Frowning, he pulled out some duct tape that he nabbed from the barn in case the wagon broke, and began wrapping up the bite to keep it from bleeding any further. Last thing he needed was an infection, and this tape was the only suitable substitute for bandages at the moment. Flicking his arm as he got the last of the tape secured, he looked out towards where the cows ran off. Seeing that Ponyville was their destination, he was quick to retreat, but not after glancing at Applejack's relieved self one last time. Re-entering Sweet Apple Lakers, he got back to work. As for Applejack herself, she only sighed and tipped her hat down, her relief washing away as she turned back to the town of Ponyville. Hearing the townsfolk cheer for her, she smiled as she shooed the cows away, letting them go on their merry way without having to fret over the Timberwolves that were previously hunting them. 
Rolling her shoulders, she began to make her way back to the farm as well. She left quite a mess behind when those cows came raging through, and Granny Smith will be on her in a heartbeat. Heroism be damned if she ignores it. Coming back onto her lodge, she found herself at the barn in no time, but stopped when she realized that her employee wasn't in the fields like she thought he would be. If there was one thing that Nate Schmidt was, it was a semi-workaholic. Or rather, he had a bit of OCD when it came to getting things done. If there was a task, he'd see through, even with a gaping wound in his arm. So, where was he? Y'all need to take better care of yourself, you hear? Applejack blinked when she heard her granny's voice speaking from her house. Looking over, she saw that the human was sitting on the porch next to the elderly farm mare, the latter having his arm in her firm grip as she was pulling splinters from the holes that were left by the Timberwolf's bite. Applejack could practically feel Nate cringe every time the bark and scraps of wood were pulled from his bloodied appendage. Walking over towards them, she could hear Granny Smith scolding her worker, and she got the last bit of wood out. You were smart to bandage it up like you did, but y'all forgot the Timberwolves leave behind these splinters to cause infections to spurt in their prey. It awakens them, you see. Granny Smith pulled out a wad of gauze, wrapping it around the human's arm as Applejack stopped at the bottom of the porch, stepping onto the second stair up the flight. You may be strong, sonny, but you ain't made a steal. Had y'all made one bad mistake and you wouldn't be walking away with just this here bot. Yeah, you can say that again, Granny. Nate looked over at Applejack, and she took off her hat, wiping her brow with her forearm as she placed her other hand on her hip. Still, though, you handled yourself mighty fine out there. Them Timberwolves ain't even resembling themselves after the fight. Yeah, of course they aren't. I aimed for the cores in their bodies. Beat them down enough, and you'll be able to trace the source of their smell. Smash that to bits, and you can kill those things before they regenerate their lost bark. Applejack nodded, knowing that his knowledge of these creatures came from his time in the Everfree. She still didn't like him living out there, but he was built to survive. She saw that in how he handles himself out on her family's orchard. They may not be as prominent as hers or Big Mac's, but he's got quite the muscle hidden under his hoodie. And with his experience in surviving the dangers of those wicked woods, there was no better creature in Equestria fit to live in those harsh conditions. Nevertheless, Applejack cared for her employee, viewing him as just as important as her family and friends. So when she saw the blood quickly soak the gauze, she was ready to give him slack. However, as soon as his arm was bandaged with a fresh roll of gauze, Nate was standing up and heading out back to work. Hey, hold on now, partner! Applejack grabbed his shoulder, stopping him from moving on. Big Mac and I can handle the load. Why don't you take the rest of the day off? I'm sure Fluttershy would appreciate the company after that stampede earlier scared the wits out of her. Nate looked up at her, then out to the baskets that he had yet to pick up. He didn't feel comfortable leaving a task incomplete, he wasn't built, nor did he raise himself to be lazy. Though Applejack seemed adamant that he'd take it easy, and judging from the light squeeze that he felt on his shoulder, he knew that she was only concerned about him, and wanted him to be safe and healthy, all things considered. Taking a breath, he nodded. <sighs> Alright, I don't normally leave a mess laying about, but I know we'd only argue if I decided to stay. You apples are a stubborn bunch, after all. Applejack only laughed. Y'all know us so well, Sugar Cube. She patted him along by his back. Get along and go get some rest, Nate. Y'all earned it after that fight. Just be here tomorrow bright and early. We'll have plenty for you to do then. <laughs> yes, boss. I'll be there. He waved to them as he passed by Big Mac, heading for the ranch's exit. Have a good one. Applejack tipped her hat at him as she placed her hand on her hip. You too, partner. Y'all get home safe, you hear? Nate held up a thumbs up as he moved along, leaving the family to themselves as he made his way out. Watching him go, Granny let a smile creep onto her lips. With her and Applejack sharing a look, the two went back to their respective duties. Come along, Big Mac. Applejack fanned herself with her hat before putting it back on, heading down into the orchard's acres to see what Nate missed. Let's get back to work. I'll be honest, I don't know why, but I thought that the Timberwolves were gonna be anthropomorphic, especially considering the cows were. It's just a weird thought in the sea of many other weird thoughts. Anyways, let's get on to our Guardians of Donators. Top Donators, Taco Cat 598 Peter Coltard, J Tin Man, Darkseid, Gauntlet, and Only One Thing. Zarsix30, Strix, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Drake Love Dragon, Pastel Skies, Austin Roland, Crazy Killer 557, Stu Hex, Dospo, Madman Stan, Delta Omega, Jack Hedge, Runescythe9852, Alton Norman, Steven Bingham, Line God 12, and many more fantastic people. Thank you all very much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.